A long, long time ago it was. Before people began to dwell in the sky. A terrible war was waged between us humans and the wicked god. After the horrendous battle, our ancestors entombed the wicked god and left the polluted inferno to find a future in the sky. Doesn't touch. Who cares? <laughs> the god of demise and destruction, the cursed power of Mount Persio. The Ant Magnus? Never heard of that before. Damn! The bastards! It's unthinkable to act against the Empire! Us heroes, we have so much to do! I've been waiting. Kill him! If left alone, he will prove a threat to my Empire! Let us trust the Just young one more. who hold the spirit within them. <laughs> Struggle alone will carry a great emptiness within you and ease your pain. How long have you known? Come on, Kibari! Move it! Go away! Our only hope is the long lost worship. Awaken! Ancient God of Destruction! <laughs> Someday you will know who you really are. Hello, awesome family. This is Earl from Awesome Gaming. And welcome to Ba'an Kaito's Eternal Wings and the Lost Ocean. This is by far one of my favorite games of all time. And I'm glad to have the opportunity to share it with you guys now that the rebranding allows us to venture away from Pokemon related Let's Plays. So thank you, Jamie. <laughs> so let's get into it and start a new game. That spirit seems to like you. If you can bond with it, something wonderful may happen to you. Are you ready? your name? So right from the start, the game will ask us which gender we are. Um, doesn't matter which one you pick, it's completely... Uh, that's what I'm looking for. It, it doesn't affect anything at all. It's... I uh, can't think of the word. It's, it'll come to me. The only thing that... It, it affects is the color of our save file, uh, blue for male, pink for female. So, I'm not sure how many uh, characters we have for this um, name entry, but in light of recent events, might as well roll with it. Oh hey, it fits. All right. <laughs> so that's your name. This is going to be a weird let's play. Going to be dated as hell too, jeez. <laughs> All right, so while we're here just enjoying the uh scenes that go by, uh 
Just want to hope that you enjoyed that little uh, opening cinematic that played at the start there. Uh, that will play every time you start up the game. And it showcases a lot of scenes that will occur throughout the game. Also introduced us to all the members of our party, and these scenes that we see here are basically just um, flashbacks of Callus, the main character. Just something to take in. Come, free us from a thousand years of darkness. A millennium of solitude and suffering. Beautiful white wings for you. For the world, death and destruction. <laughs> One thing I will say uh, before we get too deep into it, the voice acting in this game is questionable. You'll notice in a lot of parts <laughs> just how bad some of the voice acting can be. But I wouldn't have it any other way, honestly. Where am I? My name is Larikush. I'm the village doctor here at Sebelrai. They found you lying unconscious in the woods nearby and brought you here. Oh yeah, I remember now. I was attacked by rock cats. Oh man, how stupid of me. You're lucky they were only rock cats. They are herbivores. It's awfully strange to hear of them attacking humans. The animals in that forest have been acting quite peculiar lately. I'm not sure why, but they're much more aggressive than they used to be. You'd better stay away from those woods. By the way, what do you call yourself? I don't recall seeing you around these parts. My name's Callus. This is my first time here. Which is why I got lost, I guess. Callus, is it? Welcome to Sebel Rai Village, boy. It looks like you took quite a blow to the head, so I was worried you might have amnesia. But you seem to be fine. If you feel up to it, you're welcome to take a look around the village. We're only a small farming community on the frontier. So, I'm afraid there isn't that much to see. By the way, I left your winglet over there, by the window. Quite an unusual design for a winglet, I must say different from those used by the Empire. It was handcrafted by my grandfather. He was an excellent engineer. Ah, I see. Your grandfather. Very impressive. And how is he doing? died two years ago. Is that so? I'm sorry to hear that. Well, thanks for the help, Doc. 
I owe you one. Actually, I'm not the one you should be thanking. Mimai is the one who found you lying in the woods and carried you here. I see. Mimai, is it? Okay. Well, that should do it. Gotta hit myself Let's there. <laughs> Alright, so now that we have full control of Kalos here, um, you can see that that model of him without his cape is sparingly used in the game, actually. So, one thing we want to do is open up the menu because if we go into system and go to voices, uh, not sound output, that's what we want. I'm going to change it to, stere to surround sound from stereo, simply because, as you may have noticed during that whole uh, back and forth between Kalos and Larakush, there's a bit of uh, reverberation in the vo voice acting, kind of like how they were talking through a tin can. That's both in part of the, comp the sound compression and the fact that we are technically playing as that spirit from the fir from the uh, opening that we named ourselves and everything. So as you can see up at the top, uh, we have the blue. If it was if we were f female, it would have been pink up there. Uh, we don't need to. Yeah, I don't need to change any of these here yet. Uh, battle results is something that I'll change out after we go through a few battles. So I want to show everything that there is. I always like to open up all these menus just so that they're there. And there we have 120 gold. And as you can see, Bongaidos uses a card based system for its battles. We'll get more into it on what all of these are for once we get into more battles. As you can see, we can increase the uh, little menu down there to see what each card does and I'll take care of that all right actually before we continue on you can see all of Kaos's, um stats right there starting level 1 age 18 uh, 132 HP pretty average stats all around and the uh, age buckle there is actually an equipment Magnus that we can access here We'll be able to get more as time goes on, but for the time being, that age buckle will increase our resistance to sleep and paralysis by a little bit. Now, if we talk to Lara Kush again, after you thank Mima, you should visit the we visit the village mayor's house. He seemed very concerned about you. This kind of gives us another objective. It's an anatomical drawing of the human body. Feel a little queasy. Definitely want to explore around here before you continue on because it's actually a few things for us in here. Something in the wooden box. We get a shish kebab small. Shish kebabs are our main methods of healing out in the field. I'll explain more on that once we get into uh, dungeon areas. And as we come out, we're greeted to Severai, the Farming Hamlet. Now one thing about Ba'ankaitos ba is the naming convention of all the areas in the game. And in fact, the name Ba'ankaitos itself, uh, they're all named after stars from different constellations. Ba'ankaitos being the Arabic name for Zeta Seti and the Setis constellation. And Seberai being Beta Ofuchi from the Ofuchus uh, constellation. We'll get more into that as uh, time goes on, uh, but his history buffs and astrology buffs will understand the meaning behind these. 
So as we attempt to leave, this guy next to the blue flower is going to, um, call out to us. You must be the guy they found unconscious in the woods. How are you going to make it as an adventure if you keep fainting during your travels? Hey, you trying to pick a fight or something? What are you trying to say there, huh? Whoa, calm down there. I just want to give you some advice so you'll fare better from now on. During your travels, have you ever thought, I wish I hadn't lost that battle, or if only I was stronger? If that's the case, then you might want to learn more about this blue flower beside me. They say this flower records the memory of those travelers who step into its embrace. I've also heard of travelers being transported to a mysterious church and returning stronger than before they entered. To tell you the truth, I haven't tried the flower myself. But still, I thought I would tell you about it since you're an adventurer and all. These mysterious flowers exist all throughout the world. It would be wise to make good use of them. I see. I'll check it out later. Oh, by the way, in addition to the blue flowers, there are also red flowers. The red ones only let you save the progress of your journey. Keep that in mind, alright? So yeah, these flowers are actually going to be our save points. And if we interact with them... From the blue ones, we get to save our progress or visit the church. We'll go ahead and save our progress. Uh, go into slot A, and holy crap! All of these different files that I have, yeah! <laughs> you can tell I've played this game a lot. And again, you can see this one here, pink name, that was the female option. And uh, that 406 hours. Yeah, I'll explain why that is, uh, at a later time. So if we go into the church now, as we can see, pretty darkish area. If we talk to this guy down here, hmm, what to do, what to do? He's gonna be important later. And if we go all the way up here... Another adventurer. Do you stand before me in search of greater power? Whoa, whoa, what are you talking about? I don't get it. Where am I, anyway? Those who seek spiritual growth visit this church to pray. If you have earned enough experience through your travels, your prayers will be answered. This may be confusing at first, I will try to answer any questions you may have. What would you like to know? Ask about increasing levels. Simply winning battles is not enough to increase your various strengths and capabilities. You need to pray before the altar and reflect on your experiences. Only then will you truly learn, and your abilities will improve. This is the only way to realize and fulfill one's true potential. Pray within these hallowed halls. Remember that the power of realization can only be attained through prayer. Visit this church whenever possible to learn of your true powers and abilities. Any other questions? No. The other one that was there of class level is something that we don't have to worry about for the time being. Just know that if you want to do any level ups, you have to come to the church. There's no leveling up in the field. Alright, I don't think there's anything else around here for us. Grounds are empty. Yeah. Uh, if we talk to the guy down there, he'll give us some uh, optional dialogue. But it's not voice, so I'm not going to bother. Alright. Um, if we go in here... I believe there's something... Supposed to be something around here for us. No, nope. I didn't want to talk to you. Pause filled with freshly squeezed milk, smells sweet and delicious. There's some kind of container. We'd be able to carry this. Let's leave it for now. Keep that in mind. We'll be we'll be back here later for that. All right. So if we go along this way. You're the one me my 
Oh, is this him? Her? Me, my? Is this who brought me here? Uh-huh. Mima is really cool. He's way smarter than all the drunks you see around here. And helpful, too. I see. Well, thanks, Mimai. I owe you one. So, yeah. Mimai is not a person. It is this creature here called a Greythorn. These little whale-ish seal type creatures. We'll be seeing them around everywhere. Alright, now that we've talked to Mimai, we're gonna go all the way in the back here and talk to the village elder. Oh, you're finally awake. Yes, sir. I guess I've caused you some trouble. I let my guard down and then... Well, sorry about all this. Don't worry about what's already happened, young fella. Feel free to stay in this village to heal your wounds for as long as you need. However, I must strongly insist that you never go near Moongal Forest again. I've heard rumors of meddlers from Furkad snooping around that forest without permission. <laughs> Neither you nor those blockheads understand that Moongal Forest must not be disturbed. An ancient hideous monster sleeps, slumbers deep within that forest. These days, even the forest animals seem uneasy. Now is not the time to meddle in places you don't belong. And that's that. <laughs> so if we inspect the bookcase, how to be a great village mayor. It's never been opened. Oh boy. Uh, it's this bookcase we want though. Fireburst level 1. So Fireburst is actually a magic spell that we actually can't use right now. Uh, we'll be getting someone that will be able to use it uh, shortly though. Yeah, I think that's the only thing in the mayor's house. Check the beds. Yeah. Alright. If we continue on in here. Just a, another basic house. There's nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing on the beds. Something in the drawer. Dark Flare level 1. Another magic spell. Late. Out of my way. Thank you. Alright, I think that's all there is as far as uh, things to obtain in here. In this little village. If we go in here... This is the shop. The shop serves two purposes. You can buy and sell uh, the cards called Magnus, or Free Heal. It's a Pokemon Center. Costs nothing at all to do, and it's quick and easy. So we open up what we have here. We can actually buy some Magnus. Uh, we don't have enough for either of the long swords here. We definitely don't have enough for the uh, wheat crackers. We don't have enough for the bamboo shoot either, sadly. We, we can buy the safety hood, but as you can see, Callus' little portrait is uh, blacked out. That means he's unable to use this Magnus. So, there are certain Magnus that only certain characters can use. For example, the, ma the magic ones that we got uh, earlier. Uh, what we can do is buy these shish kebabs, but I'm not going to right now. There's really actually nothing we uh, really need right now from the shop. So if we head on out, you can see we're here on the island of Sadal Sud, which is Arabic for the Beta Aquari Star in the Aquarius constellation. 
and you heard the uh, mayor mentioned for Akkad, which is the uh, city all the way up there. That's uh, Arabic for Gamma Ursae Minoris, the star in the Ursa Minor constellation. So yeah, a lot of, uh, pr pretty much everything is constellation based here. And it gets even deeper than that with one of the major side quests that we'll be obtaining uh, very shortly. So right now we can actually go into the Mungal Forest. And we can also go into Nungkai Valley. Uh, Mungal and Nungkai don't have any correlations. It's basically just all the cities that have it. Uh, we don't want to do either of those yet. If we actually go back into Saburai, we can actually talk to this girl in pink. Are you a traveler too? I came to see the ancient ruins in the woods near here. How about you? Me? Well, I... someone else did yeah really ancient ruins in Moongao forest eh why don't we go have a look ourselves all right can I just say fuck you kid that shade was not needed Let's go have a look at Moongao Forest, shall we? I'd like to check out those ancient ruins. The villagers seem to have a fear of the woods, but I think they're making a big deal out of nothing. Mere superstition, I tell you. Hey, relax. You won't catch me off guard this time. Alright, so let's head into a Mungal forest now. Spooky! Alright, so as you can see, we actually have a couple enemies on screen here. Random encounters do not exist in this game. You can see the enemies plain as day on the field. So let's get into a battle, shall we? Don't be thinking you can beat. All right, so let's go over the uh, battle screen here. So first off, you can see that we have a targeting reticle on the enemy over on the right there. We can change that around with the L, bu L button. The R button will allow us to move over to our side where I have it on Kalos right now. So, here we have a deck, our deck of Magnus. Uh, it's 20 cards, and we draw a hand of 3 cards. And these will be used to attack with. On the, uh, next to the deck, you'll see the uh, little bar there that indicates, it's kind of like an indicator on how many cards you have left in the deck next to the 17 that's there. That infinity symbol up top that is 
Um, something that we don't need to worry about right now as we progress through the game that will change. I will say I'm grateful that it's infinite right now because it allows me to go over this whole battle system in detail. So, the numbers on the cards don't really matter too, too much. All you just have to do is pick a card and attack. And right now, we can only use two cards at a time to attack with. And, as you can see, uh, this is the damage screen. So, with the two cards that I used, I did 18 damage. However, as you can see there, the prize, two straight plus 13%. That's because I used a 3 and a 4 in succession. The prize system increases damage and decreases damage that you take based on how you use these spirit numbers, as they're called, in conjunction with each other. Uh, just think of them as like a uh, hand of poker, where straights and pairs will increase the damage that you do. Um, straights are stronger than pairs, and by the time we get towards the uh, end sections of the game, we'll be able to string along complete straights of 1 through 9, which will increase our damage by 300%. I'm not joking. <laughs> that said, these basic enemies, uh, these are Sharas. They're the weakest enemy in the game. They only have like 15 HP, I believe, and... The most amount of damage they can inflict to us is 9, and that's if they choose to attack us twice in a turn. Uh, this time, only did one attack for 4 damage. Our shield blocked 12 of that, so we took no damage. So here we have the green bananas. Um, these are an item that we can use to attack with, but they'll eventually become an item that we can heal with. Uh, the aging system is something that I'll go over in greater detail later on, uh, but as you can see, attack 12 and attack 4, that equaled the, oh, no, I, it, it was a saber I used, not a longsword, so saber's like 10 or 14, I don't know. Anyways, I'm going to use these two 8s to show off the pair prize, which is a basic plus 10%. Alright, so we did 20, 22 damage overall, which is not bad. 24 with the prize increase, and we won. Time to collect the loot. Alright, so we get the experience, and now we can collect the loot. Uh, we are able to collect any mag any one Magnus that is dropped by the enemy at the end of battle. So what we do is we select the round shield, and that's that. Now, if I can get over here, this green crystal is actually a treasure chest. Obtain the Voice 1 Magnus. I'll go over what the Voice 1 does later, but in the meantime, let's get into another battle. Alright, so here we have the Power Helmet. This is um, primarily for defense, but we are able to use it for offense for certain reasons. Reasons that I'll disclose later on. Uh, bamboo Shoot is our healing item right now. Heals by 45 HP, not bad. Just remember you want to press R to target yourself so that you don't accidentally heal your opponent. And here we just did 16 damage, which again is enough to take out the, the Shara because they have such pitiful HP. Way too easy. All right, now we're not always going to get a Magnus at the end of battle, but I think for these first few areas, the drop rates are extremely high, so that helps out a lot. If we continue onwards, now normally, if we hadn't talked to Shella before coming here, this log would be blocking our path. And we can talk to this guy. The forest has become quite a dangerous place these days. You better heed my advice if you want to make it out of here in one piece. So how about, are you going to ask me for advice? Well, what should we ask this guy about? And it's basically going to tell you 
literally everything that I just went over in the last two battles. <laughs> Alright, so here you can see there's another chest over there, but it's blocked by this tree trunk. We'll be able to clear that out later. In the meantime... A new enemy! This is the Eunuch. Uh, a bit stronger than the Shara, so it may take a little bit more to uh, defeat. As you can see, the Eunuch actually defends, so he's able to block some of the uh, damage that we inflict. Alright. So there, you saw that I kind of, uh... missed my timing for that first hit to block the damage. That is... You have a certain amount of time to react to certain damage coming in. Uh, so at this point, I only took uh, 11 damage compared to 23 that I would have taken. Now, you may notice that the... Fizz the... Uh, non-elemental damage, the 21 was reduced by the 12, however the 2 fire damage was not reduced at all. That is because we didn't use a water aligned defense magnus. Had we done that, we would have been able to uh, block that. And down goes the Eunuch. Eunuchs only have like 23 HP if my memory serves. So they're not that much tougher Sorry, than Shara's. And they give us bamboo shoots. Another Shara. Don't be thinking you can beat. Alright. And that's gonna take him out. You may have seen that when we first used our first attack, that one Magnus we drew, the easy. one that was grayed out, was kind of darker than usual. Uh, take the short sword. Actually, we shouldn't have taken the short sword. They're worthless. Let me go into my deck for a second, and you'll see this is what, that, what it was. Ice armor. So, as you can see where it says defense 15, water 9, that means that it blocks up to 9 fire damage with the element of water. There are 6 elements in the game altogether. There's Fire, Water, Light, Dark, Kronos, and Wind. And they each have dichotomy. Fire and Water, uh, Light and Dark, Kronos and Wind. The two will cancel each other out as you uh, block them. Uh, the camera here, this is something that we haven't seen yet in battle. This is our moneymaker. Uh, we take pictures of the target that we're currently uh, focused on and we are able to select the picture as one of our magnets to take from the loop from the loop in that regard that will be what we sell to make money because there's no money gained in the uh, field so I'm actually gonna replace the bananas with this other bamboo shoot and I'm gonna replace this buckler with the round shield. Just to power up our deck a little bit. Here we get a leather hat. Don't think we're able to use that just yet. Here we get another bamboo shoot. I'm gonna clear out these other Sharas just to get them out of the way. Hopefully, I'll be able to show off the camera function. Alright, so one thing about Kals is that he can actually use his weapons for defense. As long as you use uh, an actual defense Magnus beforehand. Alright, I'm actually going to just use this Ice Dagger here. So, you can see, we did 9 physical damage and 16 water damage. Very useful. In fact, the water damage was just enough to take out the shower completely. A uh, small knife, yeah, we'll get that just, just to have. Now, between the elemental affinities, there are weaknesses and resistances. Uh, oh, sweet. Camera. 
Alright. We could have attacked after that. I just want to take that photo to show it you guys to show it to you guys. Anyways, as I was saying, the uh, elemental weaknesses and resistances in the game, they're as you would expect, if you're a certain element, you take more damage from one and take less from the other. Loser. Uh, the Shara, for example. Oh, we could pick up a Saber too, but I want the money. Right. The Shara, for example, is actually a wind-aligned enemy and is weak to Kronos, but we don't have any Kronos weapons at our disposal just yet. The Eunuch, however, is a fire-based enemy, as we saw with its attack, so if we use the Ice Dagger, we'll do more damage. And if for some reason you use, say, a fire weapon and a water weapon at the same time in the same combo, the damage that they inflict will be uh, will cancel each other out between the elemental standpoint at least. Alright. Get more photos, sweet. Now Alright, only did eight damage, so we didn't take it out. Luckily, the shield is enough to block all damage. Is that all you got? Same for the uh, denim jacket there. So we don't need to use up too much of our weapons, of our defenses, I mean, to deal with the Sharas. And there, we just blocked all of that. And boom. Alright. A little bit more damage than the last time we used the Ice Tagger. Loser. Alright. Ooh, sweet. This is what I was looking for. So, this is the Vela Constellation Magnus. This is what I was referring to when the Constellations will play a big part in an upcoming side quest. At, at, right now, we don't have access to that side quest. We need to level up once first, and that takes like 80 experience. So, I'm not going to get too in-depth on what this is for, just know that if you get it earlier than I did, more power to you. Just keep finding the shards until you get it, because you're going to want it. And once you get it, it's not going to drop uh, anymore from sh the Sharas. So it's basically just a one-time drop. Alright, we'll just block it all with our shield. Photo, might as well. Gotcha. Eight damage with the short sword. Right. And this will be enough to take it out. This. Huh. Loser. All right. Okay, good. We don't, we don't need to pick up any of the short swords. So, the mag the uh, photo magnets that we get, they take time to develop, and s there are certain factors that affect how the photo will come out. Um, I think for the Sharas, they come out perfect no matter what. In fact, we can actually check on them now. Uh, I don't think... Yeah, we can look at them in the deck menu. As you can see, they're slowly developing. They take about 10 minutes to do so. Um, yeah. Let's see if we can get a photo of the eunuch. Let's get it on. I don't have the madness yet. Once again, I, for some reason, I wasn't fast enough. Weird. Alright. Uh, okay, there we go. Now. Four 
damage because he blocked it. Shuffle in the deck. So, yeah. The enemies also technically have uh, their own deck. Uh, basically, once our 12, as it is now, when that hits zero, the next time our turn comes around, we'll shuffle up all the cards that we have used to make a new deck, basically. And that include that doesn't include the cards that are in our hand currently. Alright, we're able to take him out with that. Sorry I had to pick you. Alright, we'll take the Eunuch photo. And this is a good time to showcase what the uh Shish kebabs are about. So as you can see where it says use. Heal HP by 20%. These are basically our healing items that we can use outside of battle. So I'll have Callus eat one and fully heal up. Now, as you notice, whenever we change a screen, enemies will respawn. I don't want to fight that shard just yet. I don't... Yeah, it's in the way no matter what. You're dead. Alright, well, we can at least take it out, because the Sharmers don't block. They take full damage. So, down it goes. And, yeah, we'll take the Leather Vest. Alright. Uh, yeah, might as well do it. was that? Save the girl! ready for a boss fight, because I sure am. Alright, here we have our magic user. Alright, so here, as you can see, this enemy, the Saber Dragon, is weak to water. It takes 80% more damage from water attacks. So we just did a whole 50 damage, and I think it only has 230 HP. So, yeah, we just did a fifth of its health already. Oh, good. We have the camera. Aw, you blocked. <laughs> yeah, when it comes to the boss fights, you definitely want to have your camera on the available as soon as possible. Otherwise, you will miss out on getting the photo, and you only have one chance on getting photos of the bosses. Which can ruin your 100% completion. That said, I'm not going to do 100% completion for this. We're 51 damage now. But I will show how you can accomplish 100% completion. And let me tell you, it's a big pain in the ass. <laughs> As someone who has done it before. Alright. So here we have the main difference between Callus and Shella. Shella's me weapon, her magic, cannot be used for defense. Alright, we took minimal damage there. And here we actually have Dance of Light. This is actually a uh, Magnus that is going to be very useful. This is what's known as a finisher. Using it will automatically end your attack combination. Oh, you block, you bitch. But it's a very powerful attack. As you can see, we just did a lot of light damage. We're actually doing a lot more damage with Shallow than we are with the with Callus. Ooh, good. Got our ice dagger. And you blocked, you son of a bitch. 
but we still did a sizable chunk of damage. And as you can see, he's pretty much out of breath. Oh, that's bad. Yeah. Up oh, here. Yeah. <laughs> Might as well get rid of that. We're not going to use it against this boss. And bosses will have their own finishers. But as you can see, it really didn't do a whole lot of damage. Shield's still okay with 64 HP. But this should be the final assault. Yup, there we go. First boss, not that difficult. Just hammer away with your water attacks and you'll take okay, care of it. Let's move on. Now boss fights, they normally don't drop uh, optional Magnus. Any, any Magnus you get from boss fights will automatically be obtained, so we get a another fire burst. You get Blue Storm, the first uh, finisher for Callus, and the Draco Constellation. Don't forget the photo! Not bad. These fangs fetch a handsome price these days. Leon. They did. My, oh my. Look at what we have here. A load of fresh Magnus. These could come in handy. Hey! You're stealing their things? They're my friends, you know. They were your friends. These won't be doing them much good now. We gotta do what we can to survive, right? After all, I don't hear them complaining. Besides, I'm not stripping them bare. I'll only take what I need. Catch. You... Graham's pendant. Leon's bracelet. You want me to give these items to their families to help them remember? Is that it? You know, I... Maybe I... That's your share of the loot. Enough to shut you up, I hope. What? How could you be so... I won't accept goods stolen from my friends! How insulting to the dead! Hey! Wait! Don't go! I... um... Thank you for saving me. My name is Shella. I'm glad you came when you did. I didn't fight that thing to save you, Shella. A saber dragon's fangs will fetch me a juicy sum. End of story. Um, you're from Mira, the city of illusion, aren't you? How could you tell? Because you have a guardian spirit with you. I knew as soon as I saw you. It's said that only the people of Mira can summon guardian spirits to this world. You seem to know a lot about guardian spirits. In ancient times, at the threshold between this world and another, souls from both worlds would meet, their fates entwined. The visiting soul would become a guardian spirit. 
yet very few were able to hear a spirit's voice. And those bonded with a guardian spirit would receive great knowledge and power. But I'm surprised. I thought that was just a legend. Some old tale passed around in fireside chats. Well, there's no way of telling if someone really has a guardian. I wouldn't blame anyone if they thought we were just hallucinating or something. Right? So here we have the first instance of the input that we as the player slash guardian spirit can put in. Usually whatever we say determines certain factors later on in the game. Huh? Was that voice your guardian? I thought I heard a faint voice in my mind. You mean you heard his voice? Uh, yes. The whole insert name here causes a blank when people are trying to speak. That's one of the main issues a lot of people have with the game. You know, aside from the terrible voice acting. I did. Just barely, though. So, your name is... I'm Shala. Nice to meet you. <laughs> your voice tickles me. It feels strange. Get that checked out within 14 days. Hey, ever since I woke up at that village, you've been acting kind of funny. That reminds me, Doc Lyricush was worried about amnesia. Like I'd hit my head or something. Don't tell me you've lost your memory. I forgot everything that happened before that? Is that it? What? No way! You've got to be kidding me. What's going on here? Let's talk about this later. This doesn't look like a nice place to chat. I figure you'll remember soon enough. Hey, Callus! I have to go to the ancient ruins deep in the forest. What about you two? We're headed that way too. Want to go together? If you don't mind. But before we leave, could you spare me a minute? Though it pains me to leave you here, my mission cannot wait. Graham? Leon? Thank you, for everything. Cast light upon the darkened earth. Save those lost in despair. O mighty ocean, guide us as we journey through the darkest pit of night. What were you... Callus, we should be going.
Alright, that seems to uh, be the perfect place to end this episode. So, thank you all for watching. Subscribe for more great content. And next time in Baan Kaido's Eternal Wings of Lost Ocean, we'll continue on into Moongal Forest. See you guys then.